Good day everyone, this is Dr. Soper here, and today we'll be discussing how to use functions in Microsoft Excel. Even if you have used functions in Excel before, I hope that you will learn something new and useful by watching this video. Let's take a look at the five topics that we will address in this video. To begin, we'll learn about the purpose of functions, both in general and in the context of spreadsheet software like Microsoft Excel. After that, we'll learn several methods for inserting and editing functions on an Excel worksheet. Next, we'll learn about copying and pasting functions in Excel, and we'll take a few moments to explore issues relating to relative versus absolute cell referencing. In our fourth topic, we will learn several useful ways of viewing, validating, and auditing the functions on an Excel worksheet. Finally, we will conclude our video by learning about some of Excel's most common functions, including the average, median, min, max, count, and count a functions. In order to facilitate our exploration of these five topics, we will be using an Excel spreadsheet from an ice cream truck business which shows how many of each item the ice cream truck sold during a particular week. So, let's get started. Perhaps the most important thing that you need to know in order to understand functions is simply that functions are tools which transform inputs into outputs. One way of thinking about functions is as a black box. In this model, a function is represented by a black box because it is not necessary for us to be able to see inside the box in order to determine how the function actually works. Instead, it is enough for us to know that we supply the function with some input values, something magical happens inside the black box, after which the function provides us with an output value, which is the answer that we were seeking. Microsoft Excel provides us with literally hundreds of different functions that we can use to quickly calculate values or to perform many other useful tasks. Next, let's learn how to actually use functions on an Excel spreadsheet. Excel provides us with many different ways of inserting or editing functions on a worksheet, including typing the function manually, using the insert function button, or using the auto sum button. Regardless of which method we use, the first step in inserting a function on an Excel worksheet is to select the cell on the worksheet where we would like our output to appear. For example, imagine that we want to know the total number of bomb pops that we sold from our ice cream truck this week and that we want this total to appear in cell I4. Regardless of which method we use to insert a function, we must begin by selecting this cell, since it is where we want the result, or the output, to appear. Now that we've selected where we want the total to appear, we can insert our function. One of the easiest ways of inserting a function is simply to type the function manually. To tell Excel that we would like to use a function, we must enter an equals sign as the first character in the cell. After typing the equals sign, we next type the name of the function that we would like to use. In this case, we would like to know the total number of bomb pops that were sold during the week, and for this purpose, we can use the sum function. Remember that a function transforms inputs into outputs. For this reason, we need a way of providing Excel with the inputs that it needs in order to calculate our desired output. The way that we provide Excel with the inputs that it needs is through the use of parentheses. After typing the name of the function that we want to use, we next type an open parenthesis character. We then provide Excel with the input values that we want to use and then finalize our function by typing a close parenthesis character. In this case, we want Excel to add together all of the values ranging from cell B4 to cell H4. 
Now, I'm feeling lazy, so I will just use the mouse to specify this range of values. But I could just as easily type the range manually. After typing the close parenthesis character, we simply press the Enter key, and Excel calculates the requested sum for us. In this case, the result is 93, indicating that the ice cream truck sold 93 bomb pops throughout the week. In addition to typing the names of functions manually, we can also use the Insert Function option. To use this approach, we again begin by selecting the cell where we want the output of the function to appear. In this case, I will select cell I5, which is where I would like the total number of Choco Tacos sold throughout the week to appear. I can then click on the FX symbol next to the formula bar in order to activate the Insert Function dialog box. It is also possible to make this dialog box appear by first selecting the Formulas ribbon and then clicking on the Insert Function button. In the Insert Function dialog box, you will notice that all of Excel's functions have been organized into categories, such as financial functions, statistical functions, and so forth. We can also simply type a brief description of what we're trying to do, and Excel will provide us with a list of related functions. Also notice that Excel provides a description for each function which can be very useful if you are unfamiliar with what a particular function does. In the current case, I can simply select the SUM function from the list. When I click the OK button, the Function Arguments dialog box will appear, on which I can provide the necessary input values for the function. Since I want to add together all of the values ranging from cell B5 to H5, I specify that range of cells, and then click the OK button. The total number of Choco Tacos sold during the week, 148, then appears in cell I5. Finally, perhaps the most efficient way of performing quick calculations on an Excel worksheet is to use the Auto Sum button, which appears in the Editing group on the Home ribbon. Continuing our previous example, if we want to know the total number of ice cream sandwiches that were sold by the ice cream truck during the week, we could simply select cell I10, where we want the total to appear, and then click on the Auto Sum button. Excel will then attempt to guess the range of values that we want to use as input, and will highlight that range on the worksheet. If Excel has guessed correctly, we can simply press the Enter key, and the correct total will appear in our selected output cell. In this case, the result is 91 ice cream sandwiches. Next, we'll learn a bit about how to copy and paste functions on an Excel worksheet. Just like copying and pasting values in a worksheet, we can also copy and paste functions in a worksheet, which can save us a great deal of time. Excel provides us with many different ways of copying and pasting functions on a worksheet, including using the copy and paste buttons, using Control C and Control V on the keyboard, and using the fill handle. Returning to our ice cream truck example, imagine that we wanted to calculate the total weekly sales for every item. Instead of typing the sum function for each item, we can simply select cell I4. Click on the Copy button, select all of the appropriate cells in which we want totals to appear, and then click the Paste button. As you can see, Excel has calculated the total number of units sold throughout the week for every item. We could also accomplish the same task by selecting cell I4, pressing Control C on the keyboard to initiate the copy operation, selecting all of the appropriate cells in which we want totals to appear, and then pressing Control V to initiate the paste operation. Perhaps the easiest way to copy functions, however, is by using the fill handle. In this case, we could simply select cell I4, grab the fill handle that appears in the lower right corner of the selection box, 
and then drag the selection down the column. A similar strategy could, of course, be used to calculate daily totals for all of the products sold by the ice cream truck, as well as to calculate a grand total for the week. At this point, it's important to begin thinking about the concept of relative cell referencing versus absolute cell referencing. The reason that Excel is able to calculate the correct row and column totals for us is that it has automatically updated the range of cells provided as input to each sum function. Put another way, Excel has, by default, used relative cell referencing when we were pasting our functions. Recall, for example, that we supplied the range B4 to H4 as input for the sum function in cell I4. As we move down the column, you will see that Excel has automatically updated the row numbers for each sum function to ensure that the function will return the total for that row. Whenever Excel automatically updates the column letter or row number when we are copying or pasting functions, it is engaging in relative cell referencing. By contrast, we could also instruct Excel to use absolute cell referencing. When absolute cell referencing is being used, Excel will not automatically update column letters or row numbers when we are copying or pasting functions on the worksheet. For example, if I were to click on cell I4 and then select the range of input cells that is being passed into the function, I could then press the F4 key on the keyboard which would instruct Excel to use absolute cell referencing. We could easily identify that absolute cell referencing has been selected because the column letters and row numbers that specify the range of cells would now be prefaced with a dollar sign. With absolute cell referencing activated, you will notice that Excel does not automatically update column letters and row numbers when I copy the function from one cell to the next. Retaining awareness of relative versus absolute cell referencing will become increasingly important as you become more and more familiar with using functions in Excel. Next, we'll learn a few approaches that can be used to view and validate the functions that are being used on an Excel worksheet. From time to time, we may want to inspect one or more of the functions that is being used on a worksheet in order to ensure that everything is being calculated as we expect. Fortunately, Excel provides us with several useful ways of viewing, validating, and auditing the functions that we are using on a worksheet. The first method that we can use is to click on the Show Formulas button, which appears on the Formulas ribbon. When we click on this button, you will notice that every cell on the worksheet which contains a function now displays the function itself rather than the results of the function. This approach provides us with a very convenient way of auditing the functions that are being used on a worksheet. Note that we can achieve the same result by pressing the Control and Tilde keys together. If we would like to inspect a single function, we can do so by first clicking on the cell that contains the function and then clicking on the referenced input cells in the formula bar. For example, if we wanted to inspect the function in cell B15, we could simply click on the cell and then click on the input cell references in the formula bar. When we do this, Excel will draw a color-coded box around all of the cells that are being used as input for the function. This can be a very convenient approach to verifying that the input values being passed into a function are correct. Now that we're familiar with the basic strategies needed to use functions in Microsoft Excel, 
let's take a moment to explore some of Excel's other common functions. Thus far in this video, we have focused entirely on the SUM function in order to compute daily and weekly sales totals for an ice cream truck business. But what if instead of totals, we wanted to calculate measures of central tendency, like an average or a median? Further, what if we wanted to calculate minimum and maximum sales numbers? Or what if we simply wanted to count the number of cells on the worksheet that contain values? Fortunately, Excel provides us with a collection of more than 300 functions, including the average, median, min, max, count, and count a functions, which will allow us to perform all of the tasks that we just mentioned. Since we now know how to use functions in Excel, we can move through this task quite quickly. I will first create a column to hold the average, median, minimum, and maximum sales numbers for each product. To calculate the average daily sales for each product, I simply use the average function and pass in the appropriate range of cells as input. The median daily sales for each product can be calculated in exactly the same way by using the median function. The minimum and maximum daily sales for each product can also be easily calculated using this approach. After properly specifying these functions for one of the products, we can calculate all of the values for the remaining products simply by using the fill handle to copy our functions down the worksheet. Finally, imagine that we wanted to know how many cells there were on the worksheet which contained some information. For this purpose, we could use the count a function. As you can see, we've used a total of 167 cells on the worksheet. If we wanted to know how many cells there were on the worksheet which contained only numeric values, we could determine this by using the count function. As you can see, 140 of the cells on our worksheet contain numeric values. Well, my friends, thus ends our overview of using functions in Microsoft Excel. I hope that you learned something interesting in this video, and until next time, have a great day.